everybody, welcome back to chemistry. And so now we are done for the moment talking about ionic compounds and now we're moving on to chapter four where we're gonna talk about covalent compounds. Now, I call covalent compounds molecular compounds and the reason why I do that is because some textbooks refer to molecular compounds as covalent compounds. So um, either one is fine. You can call these compounds that have shared electrons between the atoms and that have covalent bonds. You can either call them covalent compounds or molecular compounds. And so first I wanna remind ourselves how a covalent or molecular compound is different than an ionic compound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write some electron configurations on the board and I'll get back with you. Okay, so I'm done writing out the electron configurations for a ionic compound, which is sodium chloride, and a covalent or molecular compound, which is water. And let me just remind you that the way you form an ionic compound is what you must have happen is that an electron in one of these atoms, in this case it's sodium, it must completely leave it. So this 3S electron is leaving, and then what it does, it's completely transferred to chlorine. So let's think of what happens uh, when that happens. And one of the things that happens is that sodium here has one less electron than what it had, so it now has a positive charge. And then chlorine here has one more electron that is normal, so it has a negative charge. And again, this is due to complete electron transfer from one atom to the other. We can represent it this way here. We're just looking at the valence electrons. You can see that the three S electrons is sodium's single valence electron. It will leave sodium and go to chlorine. When it does, sodium is a positive ion, so we represent that with the symbol with a plus. Chlorine is a negative ion. We represent that with the symbol with a minus. And then because they're positive negative ions, they're attracted to one another, they're gonna stick onto each other like that. Now, Compare that to what's going on here to this covalent compound, the example of which is water. And so the important point to understand is that here, when you form water, you do not have, say, an electron on oxygen completely transferred to hydrogen. That doesn't happen. Nor do you have an electron from hydrogen completely transferred to oxygen. Rather, what happens is say here this electron with hydrogen goes to oxygen and goes back to hydrogen goes to oxygen goes back to hydrogen so you would say that these two electrons are shared so this is shared and same thing here with this other bond here between this hydrogen and the oxygen so these two electrons in this bond are also shared so you can imagine here you have oxygen, six valence electrons. Those are the electrons in the second energy level. And here the hydrogens with their valence electrons are just sticking on. So there is no electron transfer. Um, and so the atoms are considered neutral. And so here is the final structure of water. And so actually I'm gonna write this maybe in a different way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write oxygen like that. And then I'm gonna maybe write here, the dots around oxygen as dots like that, and another pair of dots like that. And then here, you can see that this pair I'm pointing to between oxygen and hydrogen is this pair is being a shared between these two atoms. And so what we like to do is we like to write shared pairs as lines. And so this line here represents two electrons like that, and then it's bound to H. Then here we have another shared pair of electrons that's shared between oxygen and hydrogen. So we draw this as a line, and then here is an H like that. And so this structure here of water, where we have shared pairs drawn as lines, and then we have these other pairs here which are not involved in bonds, we call these lone pairs. So we leave the lone pairs as dots, when you have shared pairs as lines and lone pairs as dots, this is called a Lewis structure. So this is someone's name, Lewis, who kind of invented this. And so this is called a Lewis structure, and you're gonna learn a lot more about those in a minute. Okay, so what I wanna do now is go over one more example. 
And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase the left part of the board and then we're gonna go through some additional material. So I will do that right now. Okay, so what I've done is I've written the electron configuration for another covalent or molecular compound. It's called diatomic fluorine. Its formula is F2. And so what happens here is that two fluorine atoms, which are neutral, will bind together to form the F2 molecule. And so here we have the electron configuration for one fluorine atom. I want you to notice that it looks like this fluorine atom has seven valence electrons because those are the electrons in the second energy level. Here we have a configuration for a second fluorine atom, same deal. These atoms will bind together. And the reason why they'll bind together is because in that way, what they can do is they can share these two single electrons um, that are found in each of these atoms' two p sublevel. So what's going on here is with this first fluorine, this electron I'm pointing to here will spend some time with this fluorine atom and then it'll zip over to the other fluorine atom and zip back, to, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so same thing with this electron. Uh, this fluorine electron just zips back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between these two atoms. And so you would say that these two electrons here at the end, which I've drawn a box around, are shared between the two atoms. And so if the electrons are shared between the two atoms, this is a covalent bond and therefore a covalent compound or a molecular compound. So here's another way of describing it here. So what we have is we have this fluorine atom with seven valence electrons and we have this fluorine atom with seven valence electrons and they bind together. And so they form this molecule here. So I need to give you some nomenclature here. And so um, you see this pair of electrons here um, between these two fluorine atoms. One electron originally came from the right fluorine. One electron originally came from the left fluorine. This is the shared pair. So this is the shared pair. And then here, these other pairs here that are not involved with bonding a atom to another atom, those are called lone pairs. And so here I'm gonna write lone for lone pairs. And so all these other pairs here, I think there's six pairs, right? Total of 12 electrons. Six pairs that are lone pairs. So there are a lot of lone pairs here. And so another way we can represent this formula is we can write it as a Lewis structure, which is pretty much the same thing, except whenever you have a shared pair, you draw a line. So the way we draw as a Lewis structure, we have one fluorine here with a shared pair between it and another fluorine atom. And now what we're gonna do is just draw all the lone pairs on both of the atoms as dots like that. And so this is a very nice Lewis structure of diatomic fluorine. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this space here and get back with you. Okay, if we can increase the slide. And so what I'm about to describe now is something called an octet. And so this is a very important concept that you need to learn about when dealing with covalent compounds. And that atoms in a covalent compound want to bind in such a way that they have a surrounding amount of electrons that numbers eight. Eight is an octet of electrons. And so I wanna sort of explain that on the board so if I can reduce the slide. All right, so here's our good old diatomic fluorine molecule. And so what I wanna do is for each atom, I wanna count the number of electrons that are associated with it. So let's look at this left fluorine first. And so you can see that there are three lone pairs around this left fluorine atom, so that's six electrons. You see this shared pair? We have to remind ourselves that this shared pair is not only spending time around this fluorine on the left, but is spending time on this fluorine on the right. But what we do is we assume that this shared pair of electrons is counted in the left fluorine's count, and later on, we're gonna include it on the right fluorine's count. So going back to this left fluorine here, you can see that it has three lone pairs, and so that's six electrons, but we include the shared pair in the count. So now this fluorine atom has an octet. And so here, we do a similar count for the right fluorine. It has three lone pairs, a total of six electrons. 
but we also include the shared pair in its count because again, the shared pair is just spending equal amounts of time with each of these fluorine atoms. And so this ripe fluorine atom also has an octet. And so atoms tend to want to get octets. And so one way you learn about that earlier is that in ionic compounds, that atoms will transfer electrons to other atoms and so that they can get electron configuration that's an octet. So now here with molecular compounds, they do it in a little bit different way. Here they tend to share electrons such that each atom in the bond can have an octet. So you might ask, well, why an octet? Well, the reason is, um, if you look at this carefully, um, here, this fluorine here um, on the left, it has an octet, right? But think of it this way. Um, this fluorine has an atomic number of nine. Um, so it normally has nine electrons, seven of which are valence electrons, but it's gaining this extra electron here in the shared pair. And so it's going from nine electrons to 10 electrons. And when it gets 10 electrons, guess what? It gets neon's noble gas configuration. So it's very happy. Um, same thing deal with this fluorine. Normally it would have nine electrons, seven of which are valence electrons. It gains one from the other fluorine, which is sharing with it. It also gets neon's 10 electron configuration, which is a noble gas. And so um, atoms are happy when they achieve that noble gas configuration, okay? So let's move on to the next slide. Um, so if I can increase the slide. So here, all I'm pointing out here is that the octet rule applies to a lot of atoms, but one atom it doesn't apply to is hydrogen. Hydrogen is happy when it has helium's noble gas configuration. And that happens when the hydrogen gets two electrons associated with, with it. So some atoms like octets, um, hydrogen likes only two duets. And then you'll learn later, there are some exceptions to the octet rule. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So the last slide I wanna point out is that when you're looking at covalent or molecular compounds, oftentimes what you'll see is that there's only gonna be one shared pair between the abs, and so that's represented as a single bond. But in some molecules, for example, you have here diatomic oxygen. This is the oxygen in the air that you breathe in. The oxygen in the air is not comprised really of single individual oxygen atoms. It's really two oxygen atoms stuck together. And if you look carefully at that structure there, what you'll see is that there are two shared pairs between the two oxygen atoms, and so that's a double bond. And then finally, also you may be aware that there is a lot of nitrogen in the air. Again, the nitrogen in the air is not single individual nitrogen atoms, but two nitrogen atoms stuck together, are diatomic nitrogen. And here, for reasons you'll learn about later, it doesn't have two shared pairs between the two nitrogen atoms. You really have three shared pairs, and so that will be represented as a triple bond. Okay, well, thank you for listening to that. We'll see you next time.